Time to talk about specs for the Canon 80D and how it compares to its predecessor, the 70D. <music> Canon recently announced the specifications for the 80D and I thought it was a good time to compare those specifications to the existing 70D. Now I have shot with the 70D so I was curious to know what the 80D had to offer. I did something very similar with the Sony A6000 uh, and the recently announced Sony A6300 and it's always good to do this whenever a manufacturer releases a new camera uh, to find out if it's really worth the money and the upgrade and I'm curious to know what everyone else thinks right now it hasn't been released yet it's just the specifications so that's all we have to go on and I have a handful of uh, stock marketing pictures from Canon that I'll, Canon that I'll show um, keep this discussion relatively informal and I've got a trusty list of um, specifications that I have gathered and researched and so I wanted to bring these to your attention and please use the comments below and let me know your thoughts I'm just curious to know if you would upgrade from the Canon 70D to the 80D uh, based on some of the new enhancements that they've made so let's just go ahead and jump right into it and let's see some of what they've done here so from a design perspective uh, the 80D and 70D are virtually identical. There's really not a major difference between them. Um, they are boasting that it is one millimeter taller, so there's really uh, not a whole lot there. It's 25 grams lighter. So 25 grams, um, it's really not, you know, that, that doesn't amount to much. Maybe a little pack of Starburst is what I'm thinking. So uh, from a design perspective, there's, there's not a whole lot of difference there, and why would there be? Uh, the 70D, I think, um, from a design perspective is great. Now, I do believe that the 80D does have an additional uh, custom setting button, so that's kind of nice if you make use of that. I know I do. Um, the sensor size is larger in the 80D. It's 24.2 megapixels versus the 70D at 20.2. So um, I think that's always helpful as well. Uh, I think it's kind of a welcomed addition. Uh, there are 45 cross-type autofocus points versus 19. Now the cross-type autofocus points are very helpful and I think it should help um, the focusing mechanism in the 80D. If you've ever used the 70D, um, you know, there are times when it would be nice uh, if it were more effective in my opinion. So, I am thinking that the 45 is going to be um, it's going to be a welcomed addition uh, for the autofocusing mechanism on this camera. Uh, the viewfinder. So the viewfinder is interesting because it's covering 100%. Now this isn't really a huge improvement um, because the 70D was at 98%. So would you really notice that? Probably not. But it's just one additional specification to pay attention to. Uh, they're also using the Digic 6 uh, processor as opposed to the 5 Plus. Now, it's kind of interesting to me because Canon does have the 7 processor out, so they chose to put the 6 in here. Um, I'm not sure why, but uh, you know, the 6 is a great processor, and you know, I, I think it, uh, you know, it's slightly better than the 7 uh, 70D, but uh, I don't know if that's a huge, huge upgrade. Um, now, this kind of plays into the uh, buffer size, which I think is kind of interesting. So, uh, this can buffer up to 110 JPEGs and 25 RAWs, uh, whereas the 70 is buffered at 65 JPEGs and 16 RAWs. So, um, if you do a lot of high-speed shooting, I think that's where that comes into play. Um, shutter lag, I don't think this is really... Uh, a huge one either, but uh, it's 60 milliseconds versus 65 on the 70D. So, you know, I don't think that's anything you're really going to pick up on. Um, now, here's something that's kind of interesting, which I do think is a welcomed addition to the 80D, and that is the um, it boasts uh, 27 autofocus points available at an f stop of 8. Now, what's interesting about this is that this should provide for um, better focusing at the smaller apertures and it 
should also help with low light focusing. So um, I think it'll be interesting to put that to the test when, when I can get my hands on it. Um, but that will be nice because the 70D does tend to struggle a little bit in low light, in my opinion. Uh, flicker detection. So flicker detection is kind of interesting. If you're ever um, in a lighting situation maybe where you have lights that, that flicker or pulse, um, this camera is saying it has the ability to identify that small tiny flicker that we really don't notice with our human eyes. But if you ever take pictures in an environment like that, um, you'll notice that some images are darker than others and typically that's the cause. It's because it's, it's picking up or it's not picking up on the flicker, I should say. And uh, so this is supposed to be able to detect that and I think that'll be interesting. Um, there's only one way to find out and that's put it to the test, right? So um, movie mode. So movie mode's kind of interesting here. I think this is a, a nice welcome addition. This is a noteworthy um, item where they now offer 1080p at 60 frames a second whereas the 70D was at 30. Although keep, keep in mind that I'm shooting this video and I shoot a lot of my videos at 24 frames. Um, I may go up to 30 occasionally, but I like the 24 and I rarely shoot at 60. The only time I go to 60 is if I want to slow-mo something or it's really fast action, but it is nice to have it. So the ADD does now offer that. Um, there is, uh, they have software improvement to include time-lapse and HDR movie modes. So I think that'll be nice, um, time-lapse. Um, so I've done time-lapse before, but in a different fashion. Usually I shoot them with stills and then bring them in and do software processing on them. But the camera itself can handle that now, so I think that, that'll be nice. Um, they have a headphone jack included. So headphone jack's great, so that way you can hear the audio uh, when you're doing uh, video. And it also has NFC in addition to Wi-Fi, whereas the 70D um, has just the Wi-Fi. Now NFC is kind of nice. I don't make uh, that's the near field communication, so I don't make a lot of use of that. But it's just a nice um, addition to have, in my opinion. Uh, let's see what else we might have here. I think I've covered a lot of the uh, a lot of the interesting points. A um, couple things. So the shutter mechanism. Uh, they are saying that it is similar to the one in the 5D Mark III. And what's interesting about the 5D Mark III shutter mechanism is that um, it is better suited to handle um, vibration. So uh, that should improve with any sort of camera shake or anything you might experience like that. I think that's nice. So um, I'm kind of interested to see how that pans out for the ADD. Um, and one more notable item in my opinion is the LCD. So the LCD has, um, they have the same specs as the 70D, but they're saying it's a newer release, it's a newer model of the LCD, and that uh, Canon is saying that it should have uh, better visibility in sunlight. So, you know, if you're out shooting and you make use of the LCD and you've got some bright sunlight, they're saying that um, you should have, um, you know, you should have better optics with that. So that'll be interesting. One last thing I've noted here is that um, it also picks up on the large zone autofocus mode from the 7D Mark II. Um, so it's kind of helpful if you're shooting in portrait and you turn it. Um, so we'll have to see. It, it sounds like they've made some improvements here to the auto focusing mechanisms, which I think will be nice. And just in general, they've uh, updated their video capabilities on the 1080p to shoot at 60 frames a second, which I think is a welcomed addition. So I'm curious to know what you think. Definitely let me know in the comments below um, because do you think it's worthy of the upgrade? Now I believe the uh, release price, I don't have that noted here, but I'm, I'm sure someone watching this would know, I think it's $1199 or around $1200, which I recently, well not too long ago anyway, uh, picked up the 70D kit and it, um, I think I paid around $1,200 for that. So I think price-wise uh, it's going to be relatively comparable, maybe just a little bit more. Um, I don't know if that $1,200 is with the kit lens or not. So at any rate, curious to know what you think. Um, definitely let me know in the comments below and let's get the discussion rolling here. Would you upgrade from the 70D to the 80D um, knowing just the specification differences? Um, so definitely let me know. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That's going to also help spread the word and increase the discussion wrapped around this. In my opinion, um, 
I don't know that I would upgrade from the 70D to the 80D. Um, I've enjoyed the 70D. I don't have any major issues with it. And so um, I like it. I, I don't know. I'll have to wait till wait for someone else to actually get their hands on that ADD and see if you know see what they have to say about it. And if I have the opportunity to do it, um, definitely I'm going to post a video back and I'll let you know a detailed review of what my thoughts are. So again, like the video please, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It's called The Real World. You never know what you might get. For the most part, I shoot videos on photography and technology. It's more of my space. But I also shoot videos on automotive maintenance and sometimes home ownership. So um, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.